Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodds and today we're going to take a look at creating this kind of glitched out effect, just like that. Pretty cool, right? It's actually pretty easy to make. No plugins required. I think we'll have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, if you do enjoy this tutorial, I got lots of other Premiere Pro and After Effects content. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon to turn notifications on because subscribing, as we found out recently, doesn't really do much for us anymore. Uh, so subscribe, turn the bell notification on, and let's jump into Premiere and check this thing out right now. So nothing quite like a pretty cool glitch effect, and it's something that seems to be all over the place. So I figured why not make a video on a glitch text effect, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. It all starts using the text tool, and I'm going to click out here in this wildfire video footage I have, and I'm going to type the word wildfire, just like that. I'll hit the escape key to just commit uh, that change. And then over here in effect controls, I have all my text. I'm going to go with Futura PT, which is going to be right up here, if I can remember the order of the letters. There it is, Futura PT. And then from the weight, I'm going to go heavy. And then I think I'm going to set the size. Let's try like 150. Uh, I might go, well, I'm also going to go all caps to just boost it out to all caps. That might be good. I don't, we might push to 175. I don't know. It, you know. Something like that is probably fine. I don't need to mess around with any of the rest of the settings. Well, let's just align it center because we can. Uh, and I'm good with that. Now I'm going to grab my black arrow move tool, the selection tool, and see that little center anchor point. I'm just going to hold down my command or control key and click that. Whoop, make sure we don't uh, reselect the text. I'm going to drag that and then hold down command or control. And you see the red lines that appear? That's going to help me just line this up with the center of my text. Then I'm going to grab the text as a whole, hold down command or control, and follow those red guides again, and just align this to the center of my document just like that. All right, great. We've got our text in place. It's looking good. I'm going to shut off my wildfire footage just so we're working over black so we can really see what we're doing here. I'm going to duplicate this text as well. So hold down your alter option key and just drag a copy of that text up. We now have it stacked two copies of the text, one on top of another. And here's where the magic happens. Let's zoom in on the, the bit of text here. I'm going to shut off the top text. I want to sort of play with this piece of text here and start working with this. And the way that I'm going to do that is right off the bat by applying, I'm going to collapse the text graphic uh, effect parameters here. And over in my effects panel, which I can reveal right there, effects, I'm going to search for wave warp. So I type wave warp. There we go. Video effects distort wave warp. We're going to drop it onto our a copy of text here. Then I'm going to move down so I can see the settings. First thing you want to do is choose square. For the record, you can get some cool glitchy stuff with triangle as well, but I found that it works either go all out super sci-fi triangle glitchy, uh, or you can apply it as just like a, an irregular, you know, triangle glitch thrown into the middle of all your more traditional looking square glitchiness. Uh, then I like to spread the waves out a bit. We can go like 100, anywhere from like 85 to 150 depending on the size of your text is going to look pretty cool you can mess with the phase that's going to be sort of the positioning of the the breaks in all of the letters that can be nice just to make sure you're really breaking up all your letters really well see so there we know that all the letters are getting sort of broken up except maybe that letter i uh, and then wave height, this will determine sort of how high the glitch is. I kind of like to start my glitches off big. So let's go like 75, see what that looks like. Might be a little bit too big. Let's push it back to like 50. And there we still have the text overlapping a little bit, so that looks good. Now what we need to do is use our arrow keys to move down the timeline uh, just a couple frames. I'll do probably like three frames at a time. So one, two, three. And then here I'll grab my razor tool. And I'm just going to zip that text right there. In fact, I'm probably going to make my tracks a little bit bigger here just so we can see what we're doing. Maybe I'll pu push the time, uh, the timeline up a little bit. I'll drag the audio down. We're going to mess with audio a little bit later. We're working here on this track right here. I'll lock up the other stuff just so it's uh, there's no doubt. And I'll use my arrow key once more and maybe go another three frames and cut that. And then I'm just going to delete that piece of text. So we're going to have this this glitch up here. Now, I don't know if you can see that the glitchy effect is actually moving. Uh, you can get rid of that by going back into wave warp and set wave speed to zero. We don't really want that movement. We just want the text to appear fragmented and then back to normal and fragmented again. Let's set the wave warp on our main piece of text, wave speed zero as well, because we're going to go wave speed zero for all of this. All right, let's create another piece of glitch. One, two, three, this is going to be and I'm going to cut it preemptively. I'm going to select this piece of glitch and we'll just change it a little bit. So we'll say like, uh, we'll go 65 width here to change it up and wave height of maybe only 25, right? So the glitch is going to change. So now we've created this sort of flashing effect. Doesn't look like much. Now we're going to create another glitchy effect. Move one to three frames, grab the slice tool, which by the way, the hotkey is the letter C. I'm going to move this text down this way a little bit. 
uh, here for this part of the glitch. Maybe I'll make the glitch glitch sideward and split the text. We can do that here in Wave Warp by changing the direction to 0, 0 or 180 degrees. You can do either. And then play around with the wave height. Maybe we'll set it to like 25. Eh, maybe that's not enough of a split. Maybe we'll actually push it up to like 75 and change the wave width to maybe 50. So you can see it's just slicing up the text looking good. Let's change the phase, put that back to zero, see what that looks like. See, it's a little bit too symmetrical, so I'll push it to like 22, pick sort of a seemingly random number. I'll go further than 22, I'll go 55. There we go, something like that. And then what I'll do, I'll select this piece of the text and I'm gonna duplicate it, hold down the Alter Option key and just drag a copy over. And I'll drag it over like right here and I'll select it and then we'll adjust the wave warp on this just a little bit. I'll set the phase back to zero for starters. Uh, maybe I'll make the wave width like 90 and I'll set the wave height to, let's go 40. All right, so what we've created here is just a, a, a sort of this flashing text effect. To pull it all together, let's turn, we'll unlock and turn on our top text layer and let's chop this up a little bit. So we'll use our razor tool. Our little magnet is turned on, so snapping is turned on, so it'll immediately just chop up the bits we want. See, I'm just slicing up and what I'm gonna do is delete the text anywhere where it overlaps the glitchy effect. And now what you're gonna see is we have this effect like that, this very sort of jumpy, jagged looking effect. And before we add color and really build out the effect, it's just a matter of adjusting timing. Maybe we actually want this to overlay a little bit. We'll cut this back, make it overlay a little bit, and then we'll push this effect. We'll make this effect a little bit longer, but what we'll do is we'll take this piece of text and move it back over here, but maybe we'll shorten it up just to, just to make it overlay. You're going to see it's going to sort of make the effect look even more complex, right? It goes from that to that to that. It almost gives it a third state without ever having to create that third state, and let's drag that to overlap. Now that we've changed up the timing, you can see we we get a much more glitchy cut up looking effect. So I'm going to do this and just create a glitch that's about one second long here. I'm going to, I'm just going to chop it up a little bit. I'm just speeding the video up to save time and then we'll add some color and build out the effect. Okay. And then I'm going to cut off the wave warp version of the text and just delete it. So the idea is at the conclusion of the glitchiness, we just have our solid text. And of course, underneath this, we would have our, our wildfire video playing. So we have sort of this very static looking uh, effect. And I think I need to just throw something into here. That that bit of glitch is a little bit too long. So let me just drop a quick, just a quick change up into here. Let's make this bump further apart. Let's go 65, really push it apart. Uh, make the wave, uh, the wave width about 100. So we're really just going to push that apart for a quick second. So we're going to see it's going to do a lot of cool stuff for us. All right, let's add some color. Let's begin layering this. We're going to do something really cool here. First and foremost, I'm going to drag a selection over all my text and I'm going to drag it up one track just like that because on the bottom track, we're going to layer in even more text and color effects, but let's do the color stuff first. All right, so all of our glitchy stuff is underneath the solid text. That's the stuff we're going to colorize and we're looking for an RGB effect uh, called Color Balance RGB. You can use this or you could use Channel Mixer. This is just a little more simple, so we'll just drag it right there on our first wildfire. I'm going to close Wave Warp and I'm going to get rid of the green. I'm going to get rid of the blue. I'm just going to keep the red. Now what I'm going to do is select the color balance in my effect controls panel, right click and choose copy. So the idea is I want the glitch to kind of go red, green, blue. So I'm going to go red. This one will be green. This one will be blue, which means this one here will be red. So up here in effect controls, I can just hit command or control V, paste that color balance RGB, and we've got our second sort of red phase. Then we're going to go green and then blue. And the last little bit is going to be red again. So I'll select that up here in my effect controls panel. We're going to paste in the red. Great. All right. Now here for the first green, we can paste that effect back in. So command or control V to paste in the color balance RGB, but just set red to zero and of course set green to 100. So now we have green. Now I'm going to copy this effect, command or control C. I'm going to go to the second green effect, which is going to be this up here in the effect controls panel, paste that in there. Great. There's only two greens and two blues. All right, let's come back here because this one's going to end up being blue and I'm going to close wave warp and I'm going to paste in that effect. I'm going to set the green to zero and the blue to 100. Now you can see this is why I like to overlay the white text because it almost gives us this colored glitch fringe effect. It's really, really cool. All right, and then we'll come over here and we're going to paste the same effect into here. I think I forgot to copy the blue effect, so we'll just set this from green to blue. No big deal. And now when we play through this, you're going to see that we have a sort of colorful glitch looking effect, but it could still be even better than this because I want to add layers of colors. I want to add even more micro 
micro fragmentation than this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take like this blue wildfire glitch. I'm going to hold down alter option. I'm going to drag it down here beneath this red text. Now it could remain the color blue. That's fine. And what we'll do is we'll come up here and play with the scaling. So maybe we'll push this up a little larger, like 110. But then I'm going to try a couple blend modes. I might set it to dissolve and then reduce the opacity to like 15%. Can you see what that's doing? It's giving me that really grainy looking effect. And then what I would do is come up here to the wildfire red text layer and set it to the blend mode of screen. It's going to allow the colors to interact a little more. See how now we're getting some pink in there, a lot of different colors. All right, let's, uh, let's come over here to the green and let's duplicate up this same red glitchy looking effect. All right, so right here with the red, we're going to do the same type deal. We're going to set it to dissolve, reduce the opacity to maybe like 15%, right? Uh, and then for this one, yeah, I think, I'll, I think I'll stick with scale. What I might do is open up the scaling. I don't even need to open it up. I don't know what I'm doing. Uniform scale. And I'm just going to scale the width, maybe like 115, just to push it out a little bit like that. I think that's kind of cool. And maybe I'll even cut the red. Well, the red's probably good where it is. Maybe I'll cut it. And this second part of it here, I would either delete or uh, scale it down a little bit, make it a lot smaller. Just again, just to give it the effect that it's, that it's moving around in there. And it's, it's doing stuff. So let's select the green text. We want to basically we're going to set all of our colored text to the screen blend mode as we move through this. So we're going to set that to screen the green just to allow it to interact a little bit more. And by the way, it'll interact also with video that you have underneath it. So you, you'll want to keep an eye on that because sometimes it might not do quite what you want it to. So you may have to change the blend mode to a multiply or something like that. So the red, I think I'm just going to double this one up. So I'm just going to duplicate this down and I'm going to nudge it over and hold down alt control uh, the command and option key. That's control and alt on the PC and just hit your arrow key. It may just be the command or control key and the arrow key for some of us. I'm going to select that and I'm going to boost the scale to like 106 maybe, just something kind of random. Uh, this one, I'm just going to reduce the opacity straight up to like 25 and the top I'm going to set to the blend mode of screen. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. I may actually push the scale up a little bit more, maybe like 110, something like that's cool. And you could of course mess with the actual positioning a little bit, like drop it down a little. So now you can see we're getting this just very, very complex looking effect. It almost makes the wildfire text look naked for two frames, but we need that that breathing room, so to speak. And I'll duplicate this blue back. So I'm going to duplicate this back, allow that to do its thing. Great. And now with this, I'm going to increase the scale. So I'll increase this to like 115. And then again, I'm going to set this to the dissolve blend mode. And we're going to set the opacity really low, like maybe 8%, something that's much harder to see just because we're going to move into that blue. You see how closely it resembles the blue. In fact, I may even want to come in here to the wave warp and change this from like, you know, zero to 90 degrees and then knock the wave height down to, I don't know, 35, something that's a little bit uh, more reasonable just to really mix things up a little for us. And last but not least, we'll add a little bit of additional blue here behind the red. So I'm going to alter option, drag this blue out. And you see how I'm just overlapping? It's just to give it, just to mix it up a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to set this to the blend mode of 15. We're just going to go a straight opacity reduction here, not the dissolve blend mode. We could go screen with our blend mode here as well. Make sure our red is set to the screen blend mode so we can get that color interaction. I'm going to make sure I set the blue as well to the screen blend mode. And we'll just move through, double check all this little stuff. See green, I want that set to the screen blend mode. And now if we play through it real quick, you can see that we're getting a really kind of complex looking glitchy effect. It's a lot of manual cutting and chopping, but it really doesn't take that long once you know how to do it. Now, once you have the visuals, a no glitch effect is complete without some audio and the audio is going to change the game. It really, really sells the effect. Number one, let's unlock and turn on our wildfire uh, video underneath this. And we'll be able to see immediately how the screen blend mode interacts with it. It looks very cool. And then we have all this action going on. So it'll be this very quick glitch effect. Boom, right to our title. Very neat. But back to the audio, I'm going to head back to my bin. I have this free glitch audio effect. It's a YouTube video you can download using any YouTube video downloader. Download the MP3 and uh, I'm going to drag this out. I'll have it linked in the bio, by the way, but you can find your own glitch uh, audio for sure. I'm going to take this little piece of it out way out here. See this little piece? I'm going to use my razor tool. I'm going to hit the letter C and I'm just going to chop that and chop that and select it. Command or Control X to cut and get it out of there. I'll select the rest of the text, delete it move back all the way to the beginning of my document and command or control V to paste it in place. Now you can see that the audio, uh, number one, we want it to begin absolutely as soon as the video begins because the glitchiness is going to begin right away. And then on top of that, 
I'm going to trim it to the point where it stops just before the glitch stops. In fact, you know what? I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to take it uh, maybe a frame further. I'll show you how we're going to kind of stop the noise. But I want to make even the noise glitchy. So just sort of randomly in here, or what you could do is specifically target areas where you just see solid text and just cut away right? Cut away the audio from those areas and delete those portions of the audio. So we have this buzzing and then sudden moments of total absolute quietness. And it just really gives you a great glitchy sound. Now we're going to go back to effects. I'm going to clear out my search. I'm going to go audio transitions, crossfade, exponential fade, and add it to the end of this. And I'm going to just fade this just a few frames there at the end. I just feel like it, it helps sort of transition into uh, whatever content you're presenting a little bit better. So, of course, we can check it out full screen. And there you have it. That is how to create a glitchy title effect in Premiere Pro. And there you have it. Created that pretty cool glitch effect. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, if you followed along with this, great. Good for you. I'm glad uh, for learning how to play around really with Warp Wave, add some color effect, and layer on a bunch of different things. And just play, play, play with settings here in Adobe. I almost said Adobe Illustrator. Here in Adobe Premiere Pro. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.